What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you some info about Cyberpunk 2077's surprise patch 2.1 update coming on December 5th, which is going to include things like a fully functional metro system finally, alongside multiple other improvements to the game. But I say surprise update because after the launch of Phantom Liberty and of course, you know, little bug fix type patches here and there, everyone had kind of assumed this was done as we knew that was the only DLC we were getting, but just a couple days ago, CDPR said, surprise, there's more. Now, this is being done as the game prepares to release its uh, physical Ultimate Edition, I believe, which is the game and its DLC, of course, and, you know, all the updates. So this is still pretty much the end of the line, but this patch does have a lot of cool updates coming with it that I think warranted a mention, as I've been covering that game over the years. With that said, let's actually dive into this and talk a little bit about it. First up, we have the Metro Station. I would say by far the biggest change, at least for me personally, is that now there will be 19 different metro stations across Night City that you can go and travel to, and you can choose to either simply fast travel between them automatically or properly ride the metro between all these points, though if you get bored along the way you can at any time simply skip ahead to where you're supposed to be, though the metro system itself won't be available until after you've completed Compeki Plaza, which is to say like the first act of the game more or less which allows you to leave the initial starting area and press on to other parts of the city. Now, they also mentioned during their stream that there will be some hidden stuff in relation to the Metro, which I would assume is things like Easter eggs, etc., while you're riding it. But either way, a very cool addition I'm glad to see added. But it doesn't stop there, of course. A much smaller, but I would say still impactful change, is that they're finally giving you the ability to listen to your radio outside of being in a car which doesn't take much in-universe explanation, as, you know, cybernetic implants are everywhere, so a simple radio isn't much of a stretch. So while you're on foot exploring the city and running through back alleys chasing down criminals, you can now, of course, listen to the various radio stations of Night City, including the new one that was added by the last update. With that in mind, though, they did want to stress that in certain missions and important moments, this will not be available, which includes things like story scenes, of course, but also moments in the game where the music is very specific to the scene that you're in, it will also be turned off then. So mostly just some common sense stuff. Though speaking of important story moments, they also made a variety of improvements to many bosses, but they wanted to give one specific example of Adam Smasher. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this fight in the base game, if you're fast enough, you can sort of just outpace the guy and run around him. But with this new update, he's going to be much more aggressive and actually adapt to the way you are playing the game, making him harder to shake off your tail and and thus, you know, a more difficult boss by default. But in addition to that, they're also granting him the Sandivistan, which is an implant you can get, which is why you see those sort of trailing copies behind him as he moves quicker, which is reminiscent of how it was done in Edge Runners. But again, this is just one example they gave. Apparently they made improvements to many of the boss fights, so it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Then they go on to explain a variety of things related to cars and the races. With this update, you'll be able to officially replay various races throughout the game, outside of just the one quest line that gives them to you. But once that quest is done, you'll open up replayable races across Night City, allowing you to partake as you please, which can earn you things like discounts on all the cars you can buy. And speaking of cars you can buy, they've added both new vehicles and new bikes to the game, but still not done with just that system. They pretty much overhauled the way physics with the motorcycles works, so you can do things like wheelies, ride around on different surfaces, do donuts and concrete pipes was an example they gave, but you can also now use things like throwing knives on bikes, so a lot of fun changes there as well. Which somewhat comes up with the new gang reactivity. As you complete certain gigs and you take actions that are somewhat deliberately against certain gangs in the city, they now will afterwards potentially chase you, giving you a reason to engage in some of the car combat introduced with the last DLC, which is a great little change that I think adds just a little bit of immersion, and while it's still not like a full-blown gang system that would have been nice to see, this is still a really great little touch. But we're still not done yet, because besides that, while they didn't want to show off and spoil any of it, there will be extra hangouts for your romanced companion at this point, so whoever you happen to have romanced throughout the game, you can have extra hangouts at your apartment now, fleshing out that relationship just a little bit more. The options of the game are also getting a brand new accessibility tab, which is where they are both moving all of the previously available accessibility options that already existed, but also they added a few new things in relation to the head 
heads up display or your HUD, allowing you to customize various options that make that more readable, whatever your case might happen to be, giving you more ways to customize and get comfortable with the way the game displays information. And honestly, anything that helps people enjoy video games more is obviously a grand way to go about things, so happy to see that all these years later even. Now all of that, I would say, is pretty much what you need to know about upcoming patch 2.1. While it might not literally be the last patch, it is almost certainly the last major one at this point, considering that was supposed to be the last one, and this one was a surprise, because from here we know for a fact CDPR is already working on its future projects, and they've pretty much shifted development resources. So after the DLC and patch 2.0 kind of overhauled all those systems and brought the game to a really great place, patch 2.1 seems like just a bit of a last hurrah that, while not expected, was certainly welcome. That said, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. Let me know how you feel about all these changes down in the comment section below. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.